My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to our today's reflection of the Word of God. My name is Simon Mukiri from the Archdiocese of Mombasa. Our word today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 19 to 21. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 19 to 21 says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and decay destroy, and thieves break in and steal. But store up treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor decay destroys, nor thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there also will be your heart. I read again, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21 says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and decay destroy and thieves break in and steal. But store up treasures in heaven where neither moth nor decay destroys nor thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. The word of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, where is your treasure? Where is your treasure? This is a question popping up in this passage in the Bible. And I'm very sure it's not the first time that you hear about this verse. Maybe you've read it yourself or maybe it has been preached to you. But today God is asking this question on a personal level. Where is your treasure? Yes, you come to church every Sunday. You are baptized. You even married in church. Your kids are baptized also. You do not miss uh, to attend uh, the small Christian community, Jumuia. You, you do all that it takes and all that you've been called to do in church. But the question is coming up again to me and you. Where is your treasure? My dear brothers and sisters, we must guard our hearts and make sure our hearts follows after the things of God and is not distracted by worldly things. We must guard our hearts and make sure our hearts follows after the things of God and are not distracted by worldly things. You see, many of the times we value our worldly possessions and give less or minimal attention to our spiritual life or rather our relationship with God. We, you know, we value so much what we have. Some of us value the education level that we have. Some of us value the, 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 the you know, the, the money that we have in our accounts or the, the, the wealth that God has given us. And that's why you'll find sometimes one would opt not to go to church, for example, in order to finalize a business deal. Just because there's a deal somewhere that will bring in cash. And this deal ought to be done on a Sunday. You know? So one will opt not to attend mass to go and finalize that business, business deal. A deal that can be finalized on Monday, Tuesday, and any other day. Why? Because we value so much the worldly possessions that we have or would wish to have in this world. We value our businesses and everything else outside there. And we lack, you know, ample time to give God that priority in our lives. That's why also, do not be surprised that one would comfortably be late for church service, but, the, but give, you know, be very much on time for work. So when it comes on, on Sunday, maybe, one, would, one would, would, would come for mass very late and very comfortable. But the same person come Monday, very early in the morning, even before the normal time, he or she will make sure he's already or she's already at work because we value the jobs that we have. We don't want to lose our job. But yet again, our jobs, our education, our wealth, and all the possessions that we have in this world, my dear brothers and sisters, they belong to this world. That position that you have, you are the CEO today, you are the manager, the big business that you own today. Let me remind you and remind myself that God is reminding us 
all that belongs to this world. That's why when one dies, you carry nothing with you. Not your position, not your possession, not your education, not your beauty, not your strength, nothing. Everything will be left behind. But your soul will go back to its maker. So we need to focus more on the life after death, our eternity. Where are we going to spend it? Because this life here on earth is very short. They say maybe it's 70 years. Above that, God willing, can give you some extra years. Even if it's 100 years, it's still very short. But talk of eternity, my dear brothers and sisters. It is life without end. And where you're going to spend it, it's a choice to make and a personal choice. So we need to, you know, give priorities. What comes first in my life? My spiritual life or my worldly life, what comes first? What do I put, you know, more emphasis on? Or which, between the two, do I give more time? Do I invest more? You know, talking on, of investments, in this world, many of us, we do invest. Even as we are speaking, or I'm, I'm speaking today, some of us, we are investing and planning to invest on worldly things. That's why you'll plan to buy a land, build a house, you know, save money in your account, invest in something that bl will bring in profit. But one investment sometimes we forget about is our internal life. And we need, my dear brothers and sisters, to think again and again on how we are going to, you know, invest more in our spiritual life. Because this is investment will be everlasting. It will not be cut short by your death. In fact, your death and my death will be a door into that lifetime investment, into that eternal life. And that's why in the Bible God tells us that the day you'll die is the most important day than any other day in your life. Not your birthday anniversary, not your wedding anniversary, but the day you'll die. Why? Because when you die or when I die, it is our birthday into eternity. So it is high time we, f we start focusing more on that life, or uh, rather internal life, that life after death. How much have you invested in it? And in investing means the time you give to your spiritual or you allocate to your spiritual life. Remember that in the Bible, you remember this uh, young rich guy coming to Jesus. In the Matthew, in the uh, Gospel of Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 to 22, we see this young man who is rich coming to Jesus and asking how he can secure eternal life. What does he have to do to get that eternal life? But we see after Jesus telling him that he ought to sell us all his possessions and give to the needy, this young man leaves Jesus with a sad face because he treasures the wealth that he, he possesses. And that's why he's very sad hearing Jesus asking him or rather telling him you need to sell all your possessions for you to get eternal life. Some of us today, we are like this young man. We value so much the things that we have, the material things, to a point of letting our material things and our worldly life take control of our spiritual life. Remember that sometimes in life, many of us we do good to others as a security for tomorrow. When God says we need to guard, you know, we need to, to, to guard our hearts and put our treasure where moth or decay cannot get it. In other words, let us do good in this world, not as a security for tomorrow, but for the glory of God. Many people have created enmity between themselves. Because, you know, you helped people expecting that tomorrow they'll stand up and help you. And because you need your help, their help today, and you don't get it, 
enmity comes in. You know, someone invited you for his or her fundraising. You went and contributed your money. Today you have a fundraising and you invite this person with 100% surety and guarantee that he or she cannot miss just because you attended his or her fundraising back then. But maybe this person, though you helped him or her, today he or she is not in a position, you know, to help you back. But because you did it with a lot of expectations, that's when enmity creeps in. You expect people to do to you what you did to them. But only if we can learn to do good for the glory of God. If only we can learn to update our account in heaven by doing good. Not for people to see, not for people to praise us, not for security, but for the glory of God. That when you help Mokiri, you do not expect me to help you back, but you do it for the glory of God. And when we learn to do that, my dear brothers and sisters, that is keeping our treasure where moth and decay cannot reach it. Because once you do good for the glory of God, it is updated in your account in heaven. God saw and God sees when you do that good thing. And when you are going to be in need, God can use anybody, not necessarily the very person that you stretch your hand to help. When you did that for the glory of God, today God can use another person to help you and to uplift you. We need to do everything for the glory of God, not for people to praise us and not for tomorrow's security. Learn to update your account in heaven by doing good while still you're on this earth. But because the very good that you do while you're still on this earth, it will give you the ticket to enter into the kingdom of God. My dear brothers and sisters, where is your treasure? Make sure you put your treasure where it cannot decay, where moth cannot reach it, where it will remain safe, and it will be accountable. You know, it will bring blessings in your life, and more so, open doors of heaven for you. After this life, you're going to spend your eternity in the kingdom of your Father. But it is a choice to make, and a personal choice. Let us learn to treasure and to guard our hearts, not to be distracted by worldly possessions and things, because all those things and possessions, they belong to this world. But me and you, we do not belong to this world. We are not permanent residents in this world. We are going to live one day and go back to he who made us, he who created us. We are not going to carry anything, not our money, not our education, nothing, but the very good things that we did while still on this earth. Abba Father, I thank you in a very special way for today's word. Father, with our own strength, sometimes it is hard to put our treasure where it's supposed to be, in you and with you. Help us with your Holy Spirit. Guide us... No, so that we will not be distracted by worldly possessions and things and this life that will remain focused on you and on eternal life that will work so hard while still on this earth to secure a place in the kingdom and to come and live our eternal life with you. In Jesus name we do pray and believe. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.